The evolution of bulldozers, from classic to modern giants. It's not a weapon of war, but a famous American admiral credited it as one of the four machines that won World War II in the Pacific. It doesn't have a voice, but it speaks volumes about immense power, progress, and sometimes brutal destruction. This is the unsung titan of the modern age, a steel-bodied giant that has moved mountains, rebuilt cities from rubble, and carved civilizations out of the wild. We're telling the story of the bulldozer and its incredible journey from a humble farm attachment to the awe-inspiring high-tech behemoth that literally shaped the world we live in today. Section one, the genesis of a giant. Before the roar of diesel engines, moving earth was slow, back-breaking work left to animals and people. The very first blades were just simple wooden planks pulled by teams of horses or oxen to level out farmland. And the name itself, bulldozer, didn't even refer to a machine at first. Back in the late 19th century, bulldozing was slang for intimidating someone with brute force, a phrase that perfectly captured the raw power its mechanical namesake would one day have. But the modern bulldozer needed a breakthrough in traction. The big-wheeled steam tractors of the early 1900s were powerful, sure, but they'd often just sink into soft, muddy farmland. The solution came in 1904 from an inventor named Benjamin Holt. He created a system of self-laying continuous tracks, basically an endless chain tread that spread the machine's weight out, letting it float over soft ground. A photographer supposedly saw it moving and said it crawled like a caterpillar, and the iconic name was born. Holt's Caterpillar track was a revolution, but it was still just a tractor. The real light bulb moment for the bulldozer came in 1923. A Kansas farmer named James Cummings and a draftsman named J. Earl McLeod sketched up an attachment for tractors. They mounted a huge sturdy blade to the front of a tractor, making a machine specifically for pushing dirt. Their patent, granted in 1925, is what most people see as the official birthday of the bulldozer we know and recognize. Section two, the rise of the machine. Those first bulldozers or bull graders were pretty basic compared to what we have now. The blades were just flat pieces of steel and the poor operator often sat completely exposed to the wind, rain, and sun. The controls were all mechanical using a clunky system of cables and winches that could only lift the blade. To lower it, you had to rely on gravity and the blade's own hefty weight. If you wanted to change the angle, you had to get off the machine and wrestle the heavy steel plate into a new position by hand. The 1930s changed everything with the introduction of hydraulic controls. This was a total game changer. For the first time, an operator could actually apply downward force, pushing the blade into the ground with incredible pressure instead of just scraping the surface. This gave them unheard of control and precision, turning the dozer from a clumsy earth pusher into a real excavation tool. Around this time, engineers also started curving the blade, which helped it roll and move soil way more efficiently. By the 1940s, with hydraulics becoming standard, the word bulldozer had evolved to mean the entire machine, not just the blade. The humble farmhand was growing up and getting ready for some seriously big jobs. Section three, the unlikely war hero. When the world went to war, the bulldozer was drafted. On the battlefields of World War II, these machines proved they were essential tools of military engineering. Leading up to the D-Day landings, Allied forces needed a way to clear German obstacles off the beaches while under enemy fire. The British came up with the armored bulldozer. They took standard Caterpillar D-7s and wrapped them in thick steel armor creating mobile shields that could clear mines, fill in craters, and smash through rubble, all while protecting the operator inside. They became part of Hobart's Funnies, a famous collection of weird and wonderful armored vehicles that were crucial to the invasion's success. Over in the Pacific Theater, bulldozers were just as vital. They carved airstrips out of dense jungle in days, built the critical Burma and Leto roads, and cleared debris and bombed out cities, their ability to reshape the battlefield so quickly made them as important as tanks. And this didn't go unnoticed. When U.S. Navy Admiral William F. Halsey was asked what won the war in the Pacific, he named four things, the submarine, the airplane, the tank, and the bulldozer. 
It was a stunning tribute to a machine that was designed for construction, not combat, cementing its legacy as an unlikely war hero. Section 4. Building the Modern World After the war, the bulldozers came home from the front lines and were given a new mission, rebuild a broken world. They became the workhorses of post-war reconstruction, clearing away the rubble from bombed-out cities all across Europe and Asia. Here in the United States, they were the engine behind a massive boom in growth and infrastructure. The 1950s kicked off one of the most ambitious engineering projects ever, the U.S. Interstate Highway System. A project like that, carving paths through mountains and leveling terrain for thousands of miles of road, would have been impossible without entire fleets of bulldozers. At the same time, they were leveling the ground for new suburbs popping up everywhere, digging foundations for homes, and pushing up the massive earthen dams that created our reservoirs. The bulldozer became this powerful symbol of post-war American optimism and progress. Its identity was set, a machine that could both clear away the destruction of the past and build the foundations for the future. If you think this story of engineering evolution is as cool as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You don't wanna miss our next deep dive into the incredible machines that built our world. Section five, the titans of industry, iconic models. As the world demanded bigger and more powerful machines, manufacturers everywhere stepped up. The groundwork was laid by machines like the Caterpillar 60, a big track tractor that was a popular choice for sticking an early dozer blade onto. For years, companies like Cat just built the tractors and other companies built the blades. But in 1945, Caterpillar started making its own blades, creating the first fully integrated cat bulldozer and locking in its status as an industry leader. Then the innovation really took off. In 1958, John Deere changed the game with its 440 crawler dozer. It was the first to feature a six-way power angle tilt blade, which meant operators could adjust the blade up, down, left, right and sideways without ever leaving their seat. It was a massive leap in control. John Deere kept pushing and in 1976 became the first in North America to introduce a dual path hydrostatic drive, a fancy term for a transmission that made the dozer incredibly nimble and efficient. But when you're talking about pure jaw-dropping size, one name towers above them all, Komatsu. In the 1980s, the Japanese company unleashed a monster. The Komatsu D575A, nicknamed the Super Dozer, was the largest production bulldozer in the world. This thing weighs over 150 tons and has an 1,150 horsepower engine. It was built for giant mining operations and could push nearly 70 cubic meters of earth in a single pass. These models aren't just machines, they're milestones in the relentless quest for more power and better engineering. Section six, the blade in the brains, technological leaps. The story of the dozer isn't just about getting bigger, it's about getting smarter. It's about how both the muscle and the brain of the machine got a total overhaul. The blade itself went from a simple flat plate to a whole toolbox of specialized attachments. You have the straight blade or S blade which is short and perfect for fine grading. Then there's the universal blade or U-blade with big wings on the side designed to carry massive loads over long distances without spilling everything. For clearing land, you've got the brush rake which combs through the ground, pulling up roots and rocks but leaving the good soil behind. But the real revolution was in the controls. The jump from manual levers to hydraulics was huge but the 21st century brought a leap that was just as big, digital tech. Modern bulldozers are high-tech command centers. Onboard computers let operators fine-tune the machine's responsiveness to their liking. But the ultimate upgrade is GPS-guided grade control. These stakeless systems use hyper-accurate GPS to automatically move the blade to match a digital 3D map of the job site. Think about it, no more survey stakes. The dozer knows exactly where it is and where the final grade needs to be. Hitting it with pinpoint accuracy, it saves time, fuel, and money. We're even in the era of remote controlled and autonomous dozers that can work on dangerous sites with no operator inside at all. Section seven, the modern giants and their legacy. Today's bulldozers are a world away from their ancestors. 
the cabs are climate controlled, comfortable, and packed with tech. Manufacturers have also put a huge focus on sustainability, creating hybrid electric models to cut down on fuel use and emissions. And of course, safety is king, with features like rollover protection structures, ROPS, and falling object protection systems, FOPS, now standard to keep the operator safe. You can see the bulldozer's legacy written all over the face of the planet. These machines were at the heart of massive projects like the Panama Canal expansion and the Three Gorges Dam. They've built roads through impassable mountains and cleared the land for the very cities we live in. They are an undeniable symbol of human ambition. But that legacy is complicated. The same incredible power that can build a city can also be used for destruction. Their use in war and in aggressive land-clearing projects has often made them a symbol of unchecked industrial might. Ultimately, the story of the bulldozer is our story. It's about our relentless drive to shape the world around us, for better or for worse. It reflects our deep desire to build, to innovate, and to conquer the physical obstacles that stand in our way. Conclusion. From a simple wooden plank pulled by a mule to a 150-ton GPS-guided giant, the bulldozer's journey is just incredible. It started as one farmer's solution to a problem and grew into a machine that helped win wars, build nations, and literally move the earth. It's a story where raw power was slowly tamed by precision control and brute force was given a digital brain. These machines are a powerful symbol of our ability to transform the world. And as we push towards autonomous and even more sustainable designs, one thing is for sure, the bulldozer's work is far from over. What engineering marvel should we tackle next? Let us know down in the comments. And for more amazing stories about the machines that build our world, check out the video on your screen now. Thanks for watching.